We consider a satisfactory explanation of phenomena inaccessible to observation to have been given when our account of them is free from impossibilities. The observations before us suggest the following account of the phenomena we are now considering. We know that the dry and warm exhalation is the outermost part of the terrestrial world which falls below the circular motion. It, and a great part of the air that is continuous with it below, is carried round the earth by the motion of the circular revolution. In the course of this motion, it often ignites wherever it may happen to be of the right consistency, and this we maintain to be the cause of the shooting of scattered stars. We may say, then, that a comet is formed when the upper motion introduces into a gathering of this kind a fiery principle not of such excessive strength as to burn up much of the material quickly, nor so weak as soon to be extinguished, but stronger and capable of burning up much material, and when exhalation of the right consistency rises from below and meets it. The kind of comet varies according to the shape which the, which the exhalation happens to take. If it is diffused equally on every side, the star is said to be fringed. If it stretches out in one direction, it is called bearded. We have seen that when a fiery principle of this kind moves, we seem to have a shooting star. Similarly, when it stands still, we seem to have a star standing still. We may compare these phenomena to a heap or mass of chaff into which a torch is thrust or a spark thrown. That is what a shooting star is like. The fuel is so inflammable that the fire runs through it quickly in a line. Now, if this fire were to persist instead of running through the fuel and perishing away, its course through the fuel would stop at the point where the latter was densest, and then the whole might begin to move. Such is a comet like a shooting star that contains its beginning and end in itself. When the matter begins to gather in the lower region independently, the comet appears by itself. But when the exhalation is constituted by one of the fixed stars of the planets, owing to their motion, one of them becomes a comet. The fringe is not close to the stars themselves. Just as halos appear to follow the sun and the moon as they move, and encircle them, when the air is dense enough for them to form along under the sun's course, so too the fringe. It stands in the relation of a halo to the stars, except that the color of the halo is due to reflection, whereas in the case of comets, the color is something that appears actually on them. Now when this matter gathers in relation to a star, the comet necessarily appears to follow the same course as the star. But when the comet is formed independently, it falls behind the motion of the universe, like the rest of the terrestrial world. It is this fact that a comet often forms independently, indeed oftener than around one of the regular stars, that makes it impossible to maintain that a comet is a sort of reflection, not indeed, as Hippocrates and his school say, to the sun, but to the very star it is alleged to accompany, in fact, a kind of halo in the pure fuel of fire. As for the halo, we shall explain its cause later. The fact that comets, when frequent, foreshadow wind and drought must be taken as an indication of their fiery constitution, for their origin is plainly due to the plentiful supply, supply of that secretion. Hence the air is necessarily drier, and the moist evaporation is so dissolved and dissipated by the quantity of the hot exhalation as not readily to condense into water. But this phenomenon too shall be explained more clearly later when the time comes to speak of the winds. So when there are many comets and they are dense, it is, as we say, and the years are clearly dry and windy. When they are fewer and fainter, this effect does not appear in the same degree, though, as a rule, it is found to be excessive either in duration or strength. For instance, when the stone at Egos Potami fell out of the air, it had been carried up by a wind and fell down in the daytime. Then too a comet happened to have appeared in the west. And at the time of the great comet, the winter was dry and north winds prevailed, and the wave was due to an opposition of winds. For in the gulf, a north wind blew, and outside it a violent south wind. Again, in the Archon ship of Nicomachus, a comet appeared for a few days about the equinoctial circle. This one had not risen in the west, and simultaneously with it there happened the storm at Corinth. That there are few comets, and that they appear rarely and outside the tropic circles more than within them, is due to the motion of the sun and the stars. For this motion does not only cause the hot principle to be secreted, but also dissolves it when it is gathering. But the chief reason is that most of this stuff collects in the region of the Milky Way. <laughs>